All right. Hi, I'm Taylor Quackenbush. And this is our project, The Handy Helper. So starting off with a little bit of introduction and background information about our project, we originally wanted to create some sort of biomedical device. Uh, we landed on some sort of technology to assist people with their grip strength. Originally, our scope was pretty broad, and we were wanting to assist people that were either victims of strokes, um, had neuropathy, or were just elderly and had a loss of grip strength. However, after talking with licensed occupational therapist Heather Bednars, we came to the conclusion that we needed to refine our scope quite a bit, and we decided that we were going to create an assistive technology for elderly individuals, um, and our focus group is men over the ages of 60. Um, with an average hand size. And we're gonna create our grip strength device through a pneumatic system, which we're gonna talk about in the next few slides. Uh, these are reference images that we use for an average male hand size, as well as the full motor control of a hand. So now we're gonna talk about our design a little bit. So this is actually our very first preliminary drawing that we ever drew up. Just to give a little bit of an idea of how the system works, if you look at the white oval shapes grouped together on the image over where the knuckles on the hand would be, those are where our soft pneumatic actuators will be. And if you look at the rectangular shaded in areas in between those actuators, those are what we consider our connectors. And essentially, the, if you look at the highlighted pink area on the screen, that's where our air supply is going to be coming from, and that's gonna be through uh, an air compressor, a very small air compressor. It's going to supply air to the system, and it's going to cause the pneumatic actuators to expand, which will then essentially hit into each other and cause an angular displacement. Kane's going to talk in the next few slides a little bit more about those soft actuators, but that's just to give a little bit of an idea of how the system works. And if you look at the orange highlighted um, on the glove, that's our release system, which is essentially just tubing connected into ports on the connectors, which once a valve is open, will release the air from the system. In addition to this, we just wanted to touch upon the fact that the system is able to function without an electrical system uh, through just the use of opening and closing a valve connected into the air compressor. So our main focus for this semester was mechanical design. However, uh, we are gonna talk a little bit about how we're looking to implement possibly an electrical uh, sensing, uh, electrical sensing and a circuit in for the next semester to come. Uh, these are designs of the soft actuators. We use a Ninja Flex material uh, created through 3D printing. Um, these are the mechanical properties of the material. And uh, next slide. these are the schematics of the product. Um, the numbers that are represented here are the constants kept throughout uh, each actuation design. Um, for each actuator, they lay on each knuckle, so each of them have to create a specific bending point. So gaps between the uh, ribs as well as height differences create different bending points. Image on the left is the simulation with about 10 pounds of pressure, it's just to show the behavior how the actuator should work. And the image on the right is the be expected behavior if uh, the radial displacement goes through as we expect. This is our linear thumb actuator. Um, as you know, the thumb has more degrees of movement compared to normal fingers. So this should act as an actuator to help reach that second degree of freedom. So here are the connectors that we were talking about. As you can see, we have two different ones. That's just because one of them has the air release port on the top, if you look at the connector on the left, and that's just meant to have tubing connected into it in order to release the air from each finger. And if you look at the connector on the right, those connectors are primarily used to transport air between each actuator in the system. And this is just gonna be 3D printed using a PLA filament. And here's our hand mount. So this is essentially going to be mounted on the back side of the hand. And this is where every connection from the fingers to the linear thumb actuator is going to connect into. Um, we're going to mount it on the back of a palmless glove, which Henry's going to talk about in a few slides to come. And if you can see on the image, uh, we have four holes drilled in the front for the index, middle, ring, and pinky finger. And if you look at that hole in the back, that's where that linear thumb actuator connect into on top of that plate. Uh, this is a rubber strut sensor that we'll be using for our device. Um, as the finger bends, it creates some displacement on the outer edges of the finger. So as this bends with the finger, it creates a uh, resistance, kind of like a potentiometer. 
So as that displacement happens, it'll read a higher resistance, and we hope to use it as an incremental device so it can reach up to 50% full grip, up to 100% full grip. And uh, one of the main things that actually This is a full assembly of our print finger that we have put together. Um, we do have a print of this, which we'll show in the next two slides. And as I was talking about before, there are different variable uh, dimensions between actuators. You can see that the, each actuator has a different height in between the base and the curved portion of the rib. So here's our full hand assembly with each finger included. Uh, after looking at it and doing a little bit of simulation through SolidWorks, we came to the conclusion that we may need to decrease the angle uh, in between each finger. However, we're not entirely sure yet as we haven't been able to print the entire hand, just one singular finger. So once we're able to print the full hand mount and do a little bit of testing, we'll be able to see if our assumption that the angles are too wide um, is correct or not. So this was the first print design that we originally created. As you can see, the connectors had a little bit of cracking and splitting overall due to some inaccuracies with the tolerances itself, So, which was redesigned for the next slide. Additionally, the soft actuators had some issues with printing as the material inside from the printing was hard to extract, which we also took into consideration for the second print that we made. So here's the latest print that we did. Uh, going off what Joey talked about, we redesigned those connectors so they're much thicker. They're more likely to be able to hold the air and transport it between each actuator. Kind of going off what Joey said again, we're re currently redesigning the actuators in that when it printed, the support material was really difficult to get out considering that the opening for those um, tabs on the end are very, very small, I believe about one to two millimeters like wide. So it's very difficult to even get tweezers inside of there. So we're just taking that into consideration for our next redesign for when we print the actuators again and for other fingers. So these are our products and specifications. As far as the mechanical side goes, we wanted to keep it an exoskeleton type design, keep it lightweight, which is most applicable for our scope. Uh, we wanted to have a pneumatic actuation as it was the most affordable option for our budget, and it's just a cleaner option overall. Uh, we wanted to need to have some sort of air supply. Our idea is originally a small air compressor, as it's the most simple to use, and then some sort of airflow control, either through uh, solenoid valves, check valves, or some sort of pressure regulator from the air compressor itself. And that also goes in conjunction with the air release control with valves to release it. And then we also need some safety features, such as a manual release valve to depressurize the system in case of some sort of malfunction. As far as the electrical requirements, which we're looking into, we need some sort of feedback if we're going on the electrical side, which Kane mentioned earlier, this rubber stretch sensor. We need to do some experimentation on how it would work, but that would be the feedback in order to accurately correspond with the electrical valves, which would be some sort of solenoid valve. Uh, power requirements, we need to figure out and do some testing as to what would be required to power the controller system as well as the pneumatic system. And then electrical safety features, some, such as some sort of uh, button.
reviews that we made uh, as far as any, any code of ethics, which is just some general overview of like some things that we have to keep in mind when designing this. And we have the biomedical code of ethics, which is a little bit more specific to our project as human testing can be a little bit more finicky and specific. Uh, these are our future plans. Um, for future design plans, we do plan on finalizing the design when we are prototyping and we get a full exoskeleton hand. Uh, we want to be able to try to create the full motor control that the hand can function at, as well as fully program it with the Arduino microcontroller, as we mentioned before. So here are our future testing plans, kind of touching upon what Joey said. We want to be able to pick up the dumbbell, as well as the water bottle, and test if it can pick up fragile items. Because if our system is delivering too much pressure, not only is that ineffective to the user, but it could also harm that harm them, kind of like what Joey was touching upon. We also want to test the linear actuator because we're still unsure, since we haven't actually tested it on any humans yet, if the linear actuator will create the movement in the hand that we want it to. And kind of like what Kane was talking about with our sensor, we want proportional sensor to force movement and individual grip patterns. So that kind of goes into what we already want to do a little bit with grasping a dumbbell and grasping a large 32 ounce water bottle are very different grip patterns. And we want to test and see if our device is capable of doing that before moving into maybe some more complex grip patterns given time. Yeah, so um, actually they have these types of gloves available on Amazon. However, the one difference that we wanted to make is that the actuators that they use on Amazon are made out of like, um, like a rigid plastic and they are kind of similar to like the thumb actuators and the, the movements that they use aren't as fluid. In addition to that, a lot of the actuators um, from, or a lot of the design from that, they use a mirroring, a mirroring system where they have one glove go on another, like your able-bodied hand, and the actuation glove go on the affected hand, and so you don't have accessibility to both of your hands. It's really just this hand is mirroring what you're doing with this one. And most of those devices that we looked at are also rehabilitation devices rather than assistive technology. And we want to really focus on the assistive aspect rather than the rehabilitation aspect because we believe it would be really difficult to do both at once. So um, we actually talked about that a lot with Dr. Mu, that given our time frame, we actually may have to redesign the hand mount in that it's only able to have the full functional capability of either the index, middle finger, and thumb, or index, thumb, and maybe the ring finger as well. However, we would like to do a little bit of testing first with what we have already, so then we're able to actually get like an idea of where we're at time-wise. Thank you.
So in our design, as of right now, we are trying to test it as a stationary device. However, we have thought about using one of us, I don't know if you know what those like bike tire inflators that you get, those are like very small, lightweight, you can put them in a backpack. Our idea is that eventually if we're able to make it portable, we would put that inflator or something similar to that into a backpack, and that's where we would kind of condense most of those items. So it was wearable, and that way you'd be able to more easily transport the device to and from where you, you want to use it. The goal is to be able to use it in the home, but I understand most people, like if they have an air compressor, it'd be somewhere in like their garage, say. So taking that into consideration, I'm thinking that it might be able to be somewhere like that you might be doing work. Like if you say you were to use a hammer or something, like you and you don't have very good grip strength, something like that, if that answers your question. Logan. The idea is that you'd be able to turn it on and off. 